What's going on everybody? Shadow Trucker. I know it's been a while. Don't really have any new content. I'm still going to try to do a trip planning one and stuff like that. Uh, maybe a brief trip or something. Uh, so I just recently passed my three month mark. I think it was this Monday. Monday or Tuesday of this week. Um, today's video is pretty much just a little rant. Some of the bullshit <clears throat> I've been dealing with this company right now. Or here lately. Uh, the first one we're going to start out with is, what was it, the week before last, I think. Yeah, week before last, I was uh, off, because I had a doctor's appointment on a Thursday. And I thought it was just going to be like a short little you know, procedure done, go back to work the next week. No, it ended up turning out to where I couldn't drive for seven days. I didn't really have anything crazy wrong, I just wanted to make sure nothing went wrong. So as soon as I left the hospital, I called the company and was like, hey, do you guys want somebody to take this trailer that I'm hooked up to, or do you want me to just hold on to it until next week? Because you know, I had it at home with me. And they just said, you know, we'll get back to you. We'll figure it out, and we'll get back to you, and we'll let you know what's gonna go on with it. N nobody ever called me back. Nobody emailed me. Nobody texted me. Voicemail. Nothing. I, I didn't get anything. Uh, so I ended up keeping this trailer. Whole week. Well, the very and they, they did tell me that they might need a doctor's note whenever I come back to work or for me to come back to work. And uh, I was like, oh, that, that, that's fine. There's you know that's not a problem. So I got a doctor's note ready, had it and everything. Nobody ever called me and told me they actually needed a doctor's note. So I never sent it in. I didn't, they didn't ask for it. I'm not going to give it to them. They don't need it apparently. So the next week when Friday rolled around, because you know Thursday was my eight, uh, seven days on Friday, I just got back in my truck figuring I was good because nobody had called me about anything. And I took that load down to Newport, Tennessee. Well, when I got there and delivered it, there was no pre-plan on me. They didn't send me another dispatch, nothing. I'd sent all my information in saying I was empty and all that stuff. And I called, so I finally ended up calling them after about 15, 20 minutes of just sitting there waiting. And I was like, do you guys have anything for me? And they were like, no, we can't let you drive right now because we still haven't received your doctor's note. And I'm just sitting there like nobody fucking asked for the doctor's note. If you needed it, why didn't you ask me for it? You said I might need it. So if I might need it, I'm gonna get it ready. But if you don't tell me you need it, I'm not gonna give it to you. I don't need to call you and ask you if you need it. You're grown ass adults, not children. So I had my wife send me a picture of it and I sent it to them and they were like, no, that's that's wrong. It can't just say you can, you can go back to work. So I was like, all right, I called the doctor's office and I was like, can you say that I can go back to work with no restrictions? So they wrote me another one and sent me a picture of it. I uh, sent that one to the, to, the, to the company. Nope, that won't work. It needs to specifically state you can come back to work as a commercial driver. Called the hospital again, or texted them, because the nurse ended up texting the picture, so I just texted her back. And I was like, can you write me one that specifically states this? And she, she had to go back to work to write me this fucking note so that I wouldn't be stuck in Tennessee. Sends me the note, I send it to the company. I guess I shouldn't say not be stuck in Tennessee, but uh, Send it to the company and they're like, okay, we'll have something for you, or we're going to send this to safety right now and we'll have something for you by Monday. What the fuck am I supposed to do till then? I'm not sitting at a Sunoco facility in Newport, Tennessee, four and a half hours away from my house. I'm not going to go sit in a damn gas station for four and a half hours either, or for, for the weekend either. So I turned around, I took that truck to the gas station, put $100 out of my pocket in the tank, and drove my happy ass home. Somehow I managed to start the truck, drive it all, all the way to Tennessee, with nobody noticing that the truck had started or moved, even though I logged in, did a pre-trip, everything. Nobody noticed this truck had moved from my house all the way to Tennessee, four and a half hours away. When the next week rolls around, on Monday, I get a phone call about, you know, I think it was like six or seven o'clock in the morning. And they're like, hey, do you have an empty trailer? And I was like, no. Did, did you drop it in Newport? Yeah. And you bobtailed home? Yes. Well, we need you to go back down to Newport and pick up a load that's going to Morganfield. I already know that it's late. Just try to get it as quick as you can and get it up there as quick as you can. There was a driver that was supposed to take it and he didn't. He's not moving yet. There's a few drivers that are supposed to be moving that aren't moving yet. In my head, I'm just sitting there. Like, if they're not fucking moving, why won't you call them and tell them to get their happy asses in their fucking trucks and get driving? Why do I have to cover somebody else's shit when I'm four and a half hours away. 
I'll pick up loads, I'll move them, but if it's, you know, if it's somebody else's and it's late, that kind of pisses me off. Why didn't you call them first and tell them to fucking do it? It's not that fucking hard. It's really not. Apparently, if they were supposed to take it, they should, that means they're probably closer than I am. So I go down there and get that freaking load. Take it up to Newport, get finished with that, take care of a bunch of other junk. And then Friday when I'm heading home, I mean, I was picking up a load from Newport, bringing it home with me that was going to go to Morganfield this week. I get a call from a different dispatcher. Hey, this is Anthony. You're going to be running for me next week, local. Okay. Apparently somebody got fired or quit or they're on vacation. Don't know which one. Don't really care. I mean, I kind of do care because I'm, now I'm covering somebody else's shit again. Running local isn't bad. It's, it's not. You stay within about you know, 150 to 180 mile radius of where you're at. Um, so I've been doing that this week. It's been pretty chill. You know, I'll get up, I'll take a load at 9, 10 o'clock in the morning and I'll be done by 3 in the afternoon. I think the latest one I did was 4 in the afternoon. That was the Monday one because I had, you know, I had to do that after I brought the load to Morganfield. So that one was a little, a little bit later. Still not bad. A lot of time to catch up on sleep. It was great. There was one night I got 12 hours of sleep, which I really freaking needed because I've been sleeping like crap lately. Um, now, the downside that I do have to this local shit is this is touch-free. You have to assist with unloading and, and then reloading. And I was hired as a no-touch driver. No touch-free. That's what I was hired on as. It's supposed to be like 60 to 80% fucking drop and hook, and that ain't. That's not true either. I'm, I've been doing so many fucking live loads and live unloads here lately. It's it's insane. Um, so it's 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 been frustrating. And then today I got done. Uh, well, actually, the load that I took and delivered yesterday, that I don't even have a fucking address for. They sent me the name of the company, the uh, city and state. And when I called in and asked for the address, the, the lady there, one of the female dispatchers, she asked the guy, she was like, is there a physical address? Oh no, I'll send him some directions. How, how do you uh, get a load for a company but don't get an address for it? He didn't send me an address. He literally sent me directions. Now these directions were from the exit for this facility to the facility. It didn't have anything from where I was at all the way over there. So didn't really help me too much. Not until I got to that place. So I just went on Google, found the damn address myself and rotted, my, rotted myself, which I usually rot myself on everything, but usually I have an address to do that. This time I didn't. I don't know what the hell's going on with that. Uh, so I got there, took care of that one, made it back, and then today's load I took down to Tennessee, another touch freight one. Wasn't too thrilled about that one either. Now today, when I got back to Morganfield to you know, drop the empty carts that I just brought back, uh, I had the same problem. There was no pre-plan on me. So I called in and asked about it after I'd been sitting there for you know, like a fucking hour. It's another one of those you know things where they're not paying attention again. They don't have they don't have enough people, is what they keep saying. So when I called them, they were like, "Yeah, I get you're gonna be running for him for a few weeks or something like that." And I'm just sitting there, like, why the fuck am I running local for these? For this, it's getting ridiculous. So she's like, "Yeah, we. Uh, I'll send you something here in a little bit." They sent me a pre-plan that's getting picked up and delivered on Monday, and I can't go home because it's three and a half hours away. I'm not putting any more money in this fucking truck for fuel. So now I'm stuck sitting here at a fucking truck stop all goddamn weekend rather than spending time at home with my wife. It pisses me off. It's it's getting really fucking old, really fucking quick. Because they've got me stuck in Tennessee before. Now I'm stuck here for this weekend. It's. It's fucking frustrating. And then the load that I got today, whenever they told me about it yesterday, like I had got stopped, I got back to Morganfield yesterday a little late because I went and stopped, took a shower, got some food for myself, you know, figured I'd be done for the day and doing the same thing today. No. I finally get stopped at 5 or 1711, which means my clock won't reset until 311. And they gave me a fucking load that delivers at 7 o'clock in the morning, three and a half hours away down in Tennessee. And I called and asked about that. I was like, is this delivery time correct? Yeah, we have a load for you at 7 o'clock in the morning. I was like, yes, I see that, what it says. I was like, is this correct, or is there a wiggle room with this, or what? And she's like, well, why? What's going on? And I was like, I would have to be up at 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. Well, and I can't start moving until 3.11, or start doing anything until 3.11, because that's my clock resets. I need 15 to 20 minutes for the pre-trip, get hooked up to this thing, and start moving with it. So she goes and asks, and they're just like, yep, as soon as your clock's reset, you need to get going. 
I'm not a nighttime driver. I'm a daytime driver. I have been since I've been hired with this company. There were like two times I had to drive at night just because I had appointments and they decided to still run me that day right after the appointment. So I was up at like 2.45, 3 o'clock this morning. That's why my eyes are you know, a little bit red, halfway fucking open, halfway shut. I'm tired as fuck right now. Uh, so yeah, I'm not going to pick this load up until about 10 o'clock Monday morning. And I'm going to deliver it at 2 in the afternoon just to take the load from there and bring it right back. Which, it's only like a two and a, I don't even think it's two and a half hours. A little bit less than two and a half hour drive. I'm just going over to Missouri real quick. So I'll be done you know, by 4 o'clock on that day too. If, that, if I get that load early, I'm taking it over there early. And if, well, you know, they better fucking take it so I can get it done and come right back and be done uh, for the day early again. If I can get done early, I get done early. I don't like sitting around wasting my time. The one, the biggest thing that really irritates me with this local shit is there is no way for me to get a bunch of miles. So my guaranteed minimum is all I'm getting. I want miles. If you give me a load and you're not fucking planning me back to back to back and let me have my time and like if I plan, if I deliver early, I will let you know, hey, I'm ready for another load or I will be ready for another load in this amount of hours. I can cover those damn miles, but don't give me runs that are, you know, 100, 200, 300 miles. Give me a 600 mile run. Give me a thousand mile run. Something big. Is that 1500 a week nice? Absolutely. Now that my tax, or not my taxes, now that my insurance stuff is getting taken out of it for, you know, the medical, dental, vision, all that crap. Now I'm making it's right around 1100 take home after everything instead of the, uh, you know, 1280 or whatever I was getting it for initially. So that's still not bad, but I would like to get more miles so I can get more money. I'm not out here to sit around and make the minimum. I'm out here to make money. So that's kind of frustrating. But they, and the other part is they are starting to micromanage like a motherfucker, asking where you're at, how long it's gonna take you to get your, you know, your load done. Are you at the shipper? Even though you sent in the thing saying you're at the shipper or the receiver or whatever. Um, I had freaking human resources calling me about the damn doctor's note. And even this is one of those, so when I, I gave, the, my DM is the one who said she needed the note. She sent it to safety. They're the ones who cleared me to drive again. Well, when human resources called me, she was like, do you have a doctor's note set? Or she was like, are you ready to go back to work? I see you've been off for about 14 days now. I was like, I've been on the road since Monday. She was like, oh, I didn't, I didn't know that. She was like, the other person just quit. I'm just, I'm just now taking over this. She was like, we don't have your, your doctor's note or anything. I was like, my DM told me to send it to them. And my DM sent it to safety. I was like, whenever my DM asked for it, I got confused as shit because it didn't make any sense why my driver manager wants my doctor's note. And then when she told me she was sending it to safety, I got confused because I don't know why the hell safety needs my doctor's note. The doctor's note should only be going to human resources. Anything with your medical file should only be going to human resources, nobody else. So like there's a piss poor communication with this company. Nobody talks to each other at all. Uh, there was a, somebody else that works for the fucking company sent me an email saying I needed to do my hazmat training online. Sent me a link to it. I clicked on it and it said there's nothing you need to do. So I sent him an email back and I was like, I did my hazmat training when I came on to the company during, um, I want to say in processing, that's not, during orientation. And he sends me an email back. He's like, okay, uh, well, go ahead and email your DM with that information and copy this email to it so she can see everything. I just deleted that shit. I'm, I'm not a fucking middleman. If you're sitting at your computer, email them or call them. I'm not the fucking go-to guy between offices. I'm a driver, that's it. If I need to talk to my DM or talk to my dispatcher, I will talk to them. For stuff pertaining to my loads, for me driving and or going home or you know, safety for something breaking down, I'm not talking back and forth between offices like you know, this is fucking phone tag, no. Email each other call each other. You're both in a fucking office. I'm in a truck driving. Let me do my job. You do your job. Um, what else is there? That, that probation I was put on, I went and got that damn, all the codes read. Go ahead and figure out what the hell happened after I got those read. Couldn't get a hold of safety to send them in so they can take the probation off me. Go fucking figure. So, you know, probation for three months. Still, you got like, what, half a month or a whole month left until it's done? So, uh, that's fucking annoying, too. Payroll, that one that was messed up in June, still haven't heard shit back from them. Left them a voicemail, left a fucking message with the front desk people that, you know, answered the phone. Hey, this is Lander. How can I direct your call? 
talked to my DM about it last month. Never heard shit back from them. Sent them a fucking email. Still haven't heard shit back from that either. So now I gotta send another one here in a second once I'm done, you know, making this video for you guys. Uh, it's 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 getting frustrating. It really is. Like I want to say it's a good company, which I mean it does seem like it is for you know the amount of money you make and stuff like that. But all the extra shit that goes on with it is a fucking nuisance. It is annoying as shit. There's no point in writing these trailers up. I uh, the one that I wrote up this morning I literally wrote that there's multiple holes in both front corners of the trailer like on the driver's side and the passenger side those corners that you can see in your mirror well I don't have the trailer on there right now but I wrote that there were multiple holes in each one there's like three or four fucking holes on both sides of this trailer big fucking holes and I literally wrote multiple holes in both front corners this is the response I got resolution defects need not be corrected why the fuck are you having me do a goddamn pre-trip on a fucking trailer if you're just going to constantly tell me it doesn't need to be corrected because you don't own it? And I'm going to go ahead and hit reject because I don't accept that. Rather than getting a hold of Sunoco and letting them know so that they can get their maintenance people to fix it, they just reject it or they just say it doesn't need to be fixed and they leave it at that. They expect us to go call Sunoco and let them know. No, if you're having me pre-trip it and put it in this fucking system and it's going to you, then you need to fucking send that shit over to Sunoco or find a way to load it in here so that I can message Sunoco directly with that pre-trip. It's fucking stupid. One of these drivers is going to go hook up one of these fucking trucks, forget to do the damn pre-trip, get down the road and get a fucking ticket from DOT because our company doesn't want to relay to Sunoco that they need to fix their trailers. I had another trailer two days ago. Yeah, two days ago. No, no, sorry. It was yesterday, actually. The trailer that I had yesterday was a new trailer. Actually, no, it was two days ago. Yeah, I was correct the first time. Two days ago, the trailer that I had was brand new. So whenever I hooked up to it, they sent me a message while I was already driving. Please confirm trailer you have. How the fuck do you want me to do that while I'm driving? Can't send you a message. So they end up calling me like five minutes later. Hey, I need to make sure the trailer you have is this. Yeah, that's the trailer you told me to pick up. That's the trailer I picked up. That's the trailer I pre-chipped. It's the trailer I put in the system saying I have. That, that's what I got. Well, it's saying that's an invalid trailer. I don't know what you want me to fucking tell you. That's what's on the paper. That's what I have. That's what I pre -tripped. So all day yesterday, my Qualcomm or my Omnitrack was just going off every time I do a loaded or an empty call saying that my, my trailer list was incomplete. Um, a second here. Call me back. Uh, so yeah, I got it. You just kept telling me it was incomplete even though it was good to go. So... These are just some of the things that I've been noticing so far. Figured I'd let you guys know. You know, like I said, I'm going to tell you the truth about the company. The pay is still good. People are still real polite. It's just fucking annoying with the goddamn micromanagement, the stupid collision mitigation system, wanting to slam the brakes on whenever somebody goes to take a turn onto a different road, even though you have enough time to drive past this person. They have enough time to clear and you can go. The truck slams the brakes on them. If you weren't wearing a seatbelt, you'd probably smash your head to the windshield with how hard this truck locks the brakes up, even with your foot on the gas pedal. So the collision mitigation system, the micromanagement, the fucked up dispatches, the lack of communication, expecting you to do a bunch of crap that has nothing to do with you driving. Yeah. If you guys got questions, you know, like I said, ask me. I've been honest so far. I'm going to keep being honest. Uh, you know, keep liking the videos if you think they're good. Um, I'm going to try to get one here.